Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Adrian, uh, also known as Slappy McPhee, and I wanted to do a Conclave Extra and kind of go over for some folks that um, may not have already started to download the new version 1.5.0 image, or those that are kind of kicking the tires on the idea, um, kind of want to know how the screen works on the uh, N64 case from Hard Kernel, um, and kind of show a little bit of the the systems through here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is fire this thing up and bring it up from the start. I already have my controller configured, but uh, you'll get to see the boot up animation and, and kind of how this thing works, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, get going with this. I have to apologize if the lighting is not the greatest. Um, this is just kind of a, a quick and dirty idea I decided to try to do. Um, and uh, just due to the fact that the lighting here in my office, you know, the, uh, the color on the, the screen here itself probably is not going to look the greatest, um, on my TV that is, but I wanted to be able to showcase how the screen looks itself, um, displaying the images. So that's kind of the primary goal of this, right? And being able to see some gameplay is, uh, is an added bonus. So we'll go ahead and start off with 3DO. Now I have not done any scraping or anything of that nature on this uh, to this point. Uh, I didn't add in any media as you can see so it's only the games. So yeah, uh, like we said, uh, there's been some threading enhancements that have been made by the emulator dev, so you will see better performance. There's still some audio glitching that happens um, on certain games or whatever, but it's definitely getting better, that is for sure. So... Hang on it. It's been a while since I played this. Ah, okay. So there we go, right? Ha! Ah, made myself look like a complete dumbass. Or doofus, excuse me. And as you can see, it displays that static image. So for those of you that may have... Uh, mess with this with version 1.1, 1, 1, you'll notice that there's definitely an improvement here. So there you go. That's 3DO. Pop back out. Go to Atari 2600. So just as a reminder, like the loading screens, for example, that information can all be found on the uh, RetroPie page, uh, the wiki, and it explains to you how to be able to change your stuff. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. And as you can see, it displays the Atari 2600. You'll be able to make it. 
So here we go. It's Atari, and as you can see, it returns back to uh, emulation station screen that we have here. Atari 5200. Alright, so we see that that works. And you see the Atari 5200 unit right there. So we've got uh, the links as well. Now we get on to the next system. I'll kind of show you. I'll show you how to get into the. Uh, the setup menu prior to launching a game because we typically will have people you know asking every so often about it um, so now we see that you've got the target links in the display of the N64 screen and uh, actually before I show you that I'm gonna go ahead and back out here and go to the RetroPie setup menu bezel project so the bezel project does work now um, and here's the utility and we're gonna go ahead and download a bezel so let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got going on here right so we will go to what systems do I have on here I do have Mega Drive I'm pretty sure but as an example right we were just at um, well we'll go to NES all right. And of course, as always, your mileage will vary on how long it takes you to download, um, depending upon the amount of traffic that uh, GitHub's getting nailed by. Um, I have a one gig fiber link, so um, you know, averaging seven megs per second is is nothing. But understand that there's a lot of other people out there in the world so one of the things we're thinking about doing is once we get a confirmation kind of like from the um, in a few days here from the general public I mean we've been testing this thing internally for a while now um, and then also we had the patreons come in the last week or so and they give us some valuable feedback so um, what I'm thinking about doing is offering actually another additional image that already has the bezel packs installed and that's mainly just to speed up for people that um want to have those already there, right? So they don't have to spend any time doing that. Alright, so those are installed and it automatically enables it just like you're ready or you're you know expecting to see with a standard RetroPie installation. So we're gonna go ahead and restart emulation station quick. Now I'm not gonna go down to Nest right now. You know what? I'll go ahead and run over to Nest because I mean I just showed it to you, so. So now we'll go ahead and go into Bionic Commando. So you do notice that there is a delay uh, when the screen displays an image, and that's by design. Uh, we have to have it set up, at least for us to get the best performance, um, uh, so many seconds, because certain emulators take longer to display, and um, it'll actually jack things up between the um, looking at the different outputs. So. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, right, we've got the bezel here for Bionic Commando. Pretty cool. 
So, go ahead and back out. And we're going to go ahead and work our way back. So, Thomas Wave, a little bit of Metal Slug 6 going on here. We're pretty sure we have every system that we support um, with art in here. The one thing about the system art I can tell you is that um, it's not on the GitHub. Um, I don't know the logistics of why um, we might be able to put something in there, but uh, as previously stated in the Conclave Episode 2, we're kicking the tires on the idea of actually doing something similar to the ES themes. So if you haven't uh, watched um, episode one or episode two of the Arena Conclave, um, I, uh, I encourage you to do so. I try to give as much solid information as I can. Um, so that being said, I actually uh, played this over at Dave Marty's place in his arcade uh, a few weeks back with uh, Will I Broke It um, on our Discord. So as you can see, a Thomas Wave works pretty well um, with the emulator. Some Dreamcast here. I gotta love the uh, the shadows in the background, right? All the damn glare from all these different uh, screens on my desk. It kind of makes things a little bit uh, crepey when it comes to stuff and reflections. So I have to apologize. As you can tell, this is a pretty uh, candid video. Uh, I need to learn to watch my mouth because I'm sure that it'll cause me a problem uh, on YouTube. And as you can see with this one, we got uh, Sonic in there, a little bit of Dreamcast fun going on with the logo. But this is now using LR Recast, um, not the standalone Recast right now. Uh, that's how we have it set up. However, your mileage may vary. Um, just be aware, of course, if you use the standard recast, you're going to have to do some configurations for your controller, right, or controllers in general. But all in all, it's it's running pretty pretty solid and stable here. Wow, bad time to change the view, right? So there we go. That's LR Recast uh, on the Dreamcast. So before I get into those, I'll go ahead and swing on down to the last system here, the Naomi. Uh, that utilizes the LR Recast emulator. And geez, I forgot I was going to show you guys how to go in. So I'll, I'll show you here in a moment. I'll go back on another one of these systems. So as you can see, we got yet another cool little image there on the screen. And yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like, you know, just a little discussion point, right? But I think it for $25, I mean, the case all in all is really not that bad. Um, you know, uh, there's a couple little hiccups about it, but, um, you know, some people might not like, like the temperature stuff, but I'm not really seeing an issue. Uh, you know, I'm using an SD card here. 
However, um, that being said, um, I did do a build for somebody already, and um, all right. with a, uh, a hard drive. Now, it, it does get a little bit warmer in there with that hard drive, right? So that's just something to be aware of. Um, so. And obviously, you know, just due to the color saturation of me trying to capture in the way that I have things focused on the screen, um, you know, it, uh, it doesn't look the greatest on the screen, but I can tell you that it's it, it's looking real nice. Um, we have had a few of the guys try to use game capture, and it can make things a little bit interesting. Um, people will say that they see drop frames, etc. Gamester81 kind of did a preview here a few days ago. God, I suck at this. I need to stop trying to talk and play. So anyway, um, that's Naomi. Um, and uh, but yeah, I mean it. There's a bunch of trolls out there on the internet, and they're going to say what they want to say, but unless you actually use this thing firsthand, um, you know, I suppose I could focus in a little bit better on the screen rather than... I do have a video capture, by the way, a uh, game capture card. Um, but, uh, like I said, I wanted to focus on being able to show what this, this screen is displaying. Uh, also, as previously stated, uh, like we had that loading GIF right at the beginning. Um, something like that, um, you know, no big deal. Um, And, uh, you know, but um, all things being equal, um, you know, we recommend that if you do any type of video pack, that you don't do anything that, like, plays in the background all the time. Because, I mean, let's face it, right? I mean, you're playing this to, or using this to play games. So, you know, the whole concept and idea of the screen is kind of cool because, you know, it's, it's displaying something fun on the screen or whatever, but... Um, you know, it's it's not the main focal point, right? Um, and if you get into some of these more demanding systems and you've got an active video playing, then you're going to run into a huge problem. So it's just something to be aware of because it does chew up um, a lot of the uh, core uh, for usage. So 18 to 22 percent is what we were seeing when playing um, an MP4. Now, the thing is, is it's, it's using the same cores as what the emulator does. Uh, I'm not so sure that you can code it in differently. Maybe somebody out there that takes the time to do so uh, can show that. But So go to Game Boy Advance. And we're already at 18 minutes here, so I'm going to try to um, kind of slim this down a little bit. Or speed it up, excuse me. So I'm not going too much longer here. Time flies when you're recording, right? So. But I'm going to go ahead and pop out of here. So go to Mega Drive. So here I'll show. I'm going to kind of show here what it is we're talking about when we say mash the button. So the thing is, is that the XU4 is a lot faster then the Raspberry Pi, if you have one of those, I mean the CPU on it's good. So see, you just got to give it a good bunch of bit of taps, and then you'll actually get into this selection menu. So that's just something you know to be aware of. Um, you know, some people are like, oh well, I give it a try and it doesn't work. I tried a bunch of times. Well, you got to tap that thing like a machine gun fire, like you're playing 1943. Um, you know, or break down on Naomi or whatever, um, some type of shooter. Uh, in those regards. So you can see there it was showing the Genesis just fine. Mega Drive, excuse me. We've already gone to Nintendo. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look here at the NEC PC98. Um, I know this is an older system, but there's um, some good games on here. Uh, and we do have some users that have been pretty excited about this. Um, I didn't slap a, a Sharp X1 on here for a game, um, but uh, that one actually runs really well too, and that's the most recent edition. We actually shoehorned that in with just a couple days left before release.
And I know that this is a big um, favorite of uh, one of our testers, Qbert. And uh, I want to definitely give him props. Um, uh, Zero J, he was a lot of help through the testing process as well, for sure. Um, and, uh, and then when it comes to the screen, um, put it into the release notes, but we had a member of our Discord that came along and really helped out, uh, goes by Keg, so shout out to him. Uh, essentially, we had our own guys internally work on code, and then um, someone else picked it up within the team, and then somebody else, and then Keg picked it up, and so there's there's a mishmash of what was going on and it actually helped us get to the evolution that we needed to be at to uh, understand exactly how we needed to configure this. So the way that this is um, installed for the screen uh, is much different I believe. Um, uh, Galileo is the one that really finished that off for us. Uh, one of our more recent additions to the team. Uh, he's been a rock star so far. Very appreciative on that. Um, he's actually the one that uh, enabled us to be able to start leveraging um, GitHub. So as of this version 1.5, so that you know 90, 95% of the things that we're going to have for updates are going to be able to be, you know, taken care of in that, um, rather than you having to reflash. Haven't really tinkered with the settings very much in here, so I haven't set up my controller. Um, so that's just something to be cognizant of. You know, one of the things that I do want to say here is that we do, um, you know, we, we've done a lot of tweaking and stuff to take away a lot of the heavy liftings required by the users. But at the same time, there's still some stuff that you're going to need to do yourself, right? I mean, it's just, you know, we can't do everything. And, you know, if you do too much hand-holding, to be completely frank, then it prevents people from learning. And part of the fun of this should be people learning, you know. Um, because you're going to get a sense of accomplishment, right? And you figure some of this stuff out. And then you want to be able to know how to tweak some of these nerd knobs so that you can be sure that um, you can make it exactly the way you want it. Because everybody's taste is a little bit different. So. So, like I said, I don't have everything um, configured or set up here, but I just wanted to be able to show you for the screen anyway. Alright, looks like Saturn is our last one. And we're coming up on the 25 minute mark anyway, so this is definitely, you know, a longer video again. But I'm really hoping that it gives people a good idea of what to expect, that uh, especially ones that have not messed around with the image at all yet. So the one thing to let you know here about the Saturn um, that could be kind of valuable to you is that, yes, the buttons are a little bit uh, screwy, oh, right, by default. But if you hit select, this is one of the bonuses that we have of the fact that um, the dev is working to do a custom build for us. Um, you can come in here and you can map your controllers for player one and player two. Um, if you want, you can show a high the FPS. There's enable, disable, frame skip. You can reset, exit, all that. Um, we are going to be talking to him about actually doing like a controller configuration clearing option as well in here. But um, he's been a rock star so far. Um, we've been super excited to be working with him. 
So just kind of wanted to put that out there. So there you go guys, um, that's the screen and then also just uh, some of the cool stuff that's going on with this new image that we have, the base image. Uh, we hope that uh, everybody's excited to be using it or um, gets excited to use it and um, we'll talk to you soon. Take care.